everybody. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. I stumbled upon a page from one of the oil companies and it talked about its interest in Mars, which got me to be digging deeper about other companies that might have an interest in Mars. This evidently stems from a combination of technological expertise transfer, potential for resource extraction in space, and strategic diversification of their business models beyond Earth um, bound here with uh, fossil fuels. They believe that the expertise in drilling, exploration, and operations in extreme environments like deep sea or arctic conditions aligns closely with the challenges of planetary exploration. Now, oil companies possess advanced drilling and engineering capabilities that can be adapted for Mars missions, particularly for accessing subsurface resources such as water ice, which could be converted into drinking water, oxygen or rocket fuel, Viva in pseudo resource utilization, ISRU. This would be vital for sustaining human presence on Mars without relying solely on supplies from Earth. BP, the British Petroleum Company. In August of last year, BP signed a Space Act agreement with NASA to share digital technologies, simulation models, and expertise in remote operations. Their plan includes developing what they call digital twins for monitoring equipment in harsh environments, which could enable drilling on Mars for hidden resources, like underground water reservoirs. And they believe that um, there is enough water under the surface of Mars to cover the planet in a mild deep ocean. Another company that wants to head to Mars for its development is a Norwegian electronic firm, Zubtech. Now they supply the offshore oil industry with electronics. Their tools, originally designed for hydrocarbon exploration, are being repurposed to uh, search for signs of life or resources in Mars subsurface. This, they say, is the same as conditions that mimic deep sea extremes, uh, low pressure, and temperatures around a minus 63 Celsius. NASA technologies developed for Mars, like CO2 conversion into propellants, have been adapted by the oil and gas firms to reduce emissions in operations. Mars, they say, offers the potential for mining minerals such as iron, titanium, aluminum, and gases such as methane detected in the atmosphere, which could support long-term colonization. Oil companies see parallels to their core business of resource prospecting and extraction. Innovations in converting Martian CO2 and water into fuel could create new markets. Can you imagine you'd be buying products that will be stamped made on, you know, on Mars? For instance, Honeywell with energy and aerospace divisions have highlighted that the first companies to produce fuel on Mars or the moon could generate significant value for NASA and commercial space ventures, drawing on the oil industry expertise in gas pr production processing. As private space firms like SpaceX advances Mars missions, did you know you could buy um, Doggy E Mars coins on the um, blockchain now. I didn't know that until I was doing research about this. Yeah, right now it's an all time low. So I'm not um, as, or telling people that they need to buy um, Bitcoin or block coins or whatever. Anyway, recent opinion pieces in industrial circles argue that the oil and gas sector should lead space exploration due to its logistical and engineering prowess potentially opening revenue streams in the off-world mining or infrastructure. In the future, there's going to be a global shift away from fossil fuels. Oil companies and oil-rich nations are investing now in space as a hedge for the future. They're looking at futures 100 years from now. Maybe not for themselves because they won't be here, but maybe for their grandchildren. The United Arab Emirates, home to major oil firms, 
like ADNOC, is using its oil revenues to fund a plan for building a robotic construction city on Mars by 2117. The UAE Space Agency, established in 2014, sees this as a long-term seed for generational progress, potentially collaborating with firms like SpaceX, Elon Musk. They are hoping this will position the UAE as a space leader, similar to how it has invested in futuristic Earth projects. While not all oil majors, such as ExxonMobil or Chevron, have publicly announced direct Mars involvement, the trend is growing, driven by partnerships and the broader space economy projected value in trillions. This is all tied to NASA's Artemis pro program for moon return as a stepping stone to Mars. But with the current shutdown, um, yeah, there's delays, and Elon Musk is also heavily involved in that. The UAE, in collaboration with SpaceX, aims to establish the first inhabited human settlement on Mars by 2017. It's supposedly going to start with robotic construction of a mini city. While not directly an oil project in the sense of extracting resources on Mars, it is tied to the UAE's oil wealth, revenues that they've gotten from their hydrocarbon um, sectors there in their country. The long-term goal is to diversify its economy beyond fossil fuels. They are working on reforming education in the UAE to build STEM skills among the youth, fostering a knowledge-based economy. So what is STEM skills? STEM education equips learners of all ages with a foundational knowledge of math, science, engineering, and technology through hands-on projects and experimental learning. They believe that it develops critical thinking and problem-solving skills for tackling real-world problems. STEM activities encourage deeper thinking and experimentation. They also believe that this is planetary insurance positioning Mars settlements as a backup for humanity for any futuristic potential catastrophes. The UAE's 100-year plan is structured in phases focusing on gradual progress then rushed milestones. The first phase of their program was from 2017 until 2030. There's that 2030 date again. It would include educational reforms, international partnerships, and getting ready for future missions. The second phase of their project would be from 2040 to develop technologies for deep space travel, habitat construction, and resource extraction on Mars. The third phase, and the last one that's mentioned, is from 2070 to 2117 to establish the robot-built settlement followed by human habitation. I don't know if it's finished or not, but they were working on a Mars science city, a $136 million project that was an Earth-based simulation facility in Dubai Academy City, spanning 1.9 million square feet, and it replicates Mars' harsh environment. Within it was labs that focused on food, energy, water, and agriculture. Now, I've talked about the hope probe that was going to supply pictures of that very weird object that recently passed by Mars, um, I-3 Atlas. Many of you remember that. You know, it only takes about two minutes for a message to come from um, the Hope probe to Earth. I haven't seen any new pictures from them. I know we haven't got anything from NASA because NASA is partially shut down because of the government pro project. But the HOPE probe did um, ascertain images, and that was developed and funded by the UAE Space Agency, that HOPE probe. The UAE also supports NASA Artemis program, including a 2028 interplanetary mission and a lunar gateway station as a precursor to Mars tech. These projects are explicitly funded by the UAE's um, derived wealth. 30% of it comes from their 
um, yeah, their oil and gas industry. Over $5 billion so far has been invested in UAE's space program since 2014. Many of you may remember, yeah, there at that summit, they highlighted the projects. So for right now, the three companies that have the most interest in Mars is, of course, NASA, the European Space Agency, and the UAE Space Agency. And aerospace firms such as SpaceX, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. Now, with that said, there is a handful of major oil companies that have indirect connections through technology partnerships with NASA, where their expertise in drilling resources, extraction, and extreme environments uh, could support future space activities like um, the mining the water ice on the moon or the Mar or Mars. And BP, British Petroleum, is the only one that I could find that has signed a Space Act agreement with NASA. Now, Chevron in 2011 collaborated with NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Um, they focus on imaging technology, helping them with tools to aid in mapping planetary resources. ExxonMobil has put in, been putting ideas about using the oil industry tech for Martian fuel production. So, so far it looks like the UAE's Mars ambitions are the top of the list of different uh, oil revenues that's being used to, uh, yeah, have insurance for humans on another planet if something happens here on Earth. You know, what do they know or what do they fear that they're not telling us? Or is it something that we all fear? What are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.